right, everybody, welcome again for another live interview here with the Geek Rick and Oscar. And today I am bringing you another lovely cosplay by the name of Beck M. Cosplay Wonderland. And what better Wonderland than this Wonderland that we're going to be seeing? <laughs> Hello. So this is your, your first time doing an interview of this order. Yeah, I honestly didn't even know how Google Plus worked until you explained it to me yesterday. <laughs> and it only took me five minutes. That's how, that's how easy it is. Yeah, I guess it's useful for something. Yes, it is. So, Richie, I wanted to ask you, you've been complaining for how long now? Um, that's a... Weird question for me because originally I started cosplaying uh, early high school, but I quit for a long time because of some awkward situations. And I came back not maybe two years ago and like just started sewing two years ago. All right, all right. Well, it looks like um, your followers already have a bunch of questions to ask you. Oh, God. <laughs> Where uh, are the questions? <laughs> I can't see them. Well, the first question comes from Sarah Peltier. If I butcher your last names, I am sorry. I am Spanish, so I can't read a lot of last names correctly. Um, how much time do you spend cosplaying, and what keeps you motivated? Um, the majority of my time is spent either sewing or going to a photo shoot or planning my next costume, so... Yeah, the majority of my time. And what was the second half of that question? Um, what keeps you motivated? Honestly, just falling in love with a character is enough. Like, Overwatch is a, the most recent costume I've been working on, and I don't even think this game is out yet. But I watched the cinematic trailer, and I just I fell in love with her. She's adorable. I love her little accent. She's just the cutest thing. It's just falling in love with a character is what gets me motivated, and then I just start selling. All right. Um, but speaking of that, you know, you've been cosplaying for a little while. You just got back there, but did you ever, ever expect to be where you are now, like doing the photo shoots and everything from when you first started doing cosplay? Sorry, what was that? I can barely hear you. Did you ever ex suspect that you were going to be where you are now in cosplay when you started? You know, with all the photo shoots and everything. Honestly, no. The photo shoots, I did not expect for me much. Um, I didn't expect to have a cosplay page, and I didn't expect to have more than 10 people like it for the 7K I have, which is, to me, a lot, but to most people, probably not that much. But I'm doing mostly what I did before. Nothing's really changed for me otherwise. So yes and no. <laughs> All right. Um... Here's a question from Danny McMahon. Uh, what, what cosplay? <laughs> I'm guessing you know the name. That weeaboo. What does she want? <laughs> uh, what cosplay has taken you the longest to complete? Um, ironically enough, it's a costume I don't even have photos of on my page. It was my Dynasty Warriors costume. It was a uh, Wang, Wang Yi. I think I'm saying that right. I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah, Dynasty Warriors 8. There are no pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to see it, too bad, people. I'm sorry. Pretty much. Like, I'll probably, I'll dig through my hard drive. Maybe I'll find one. I don't know. Hopefully. Because that took me a good month to make. All right. Um, here's another question from Blake Zimmerman. How do you find the materials for your cosplays? I've seen how detailed you make them. They can't be cheap. Actually, it depends on the costume. Like, um, something I'm working on for Katsukon, my big sister cosplay from Bioshock, is um, so far I've spent maybe $15 and the helmet is already sculpted. It's a lot of the fact I have so much leftover materials from old projects and I'm a hoarder. I don't throw anything out. So all these materials just kind of accumulate and now that I have so much of it, I can basically make costumes just out of things I have in my closet. All right. Um, Mark Atwood wants to know which, which cosplay has been the most challenging for you to complete. The most what? The most challenging for you to complete. 
It's um, hmm. a really good question. I I don't know. <laughs> uh, so far, I guess the newer ones that I'm making are most challenging, but every costume I get, I try to choose something that's a little harder than I did last time, so every new costume is more challenging than the last for me. All right. Uh, let, let me ask you, um, you've been to a few conventions here and there. Has there ever been a cosplayer that you really admire that you that you met already? Um, there are cosplayers that I admire. Some the ones that I admire the most I haven't actually met yet. And I know I'm probably gonna butcher their cosplay page name in about ten seconds. I call them Twinink or Twin Ick something. They're twins. Hee Hee and Hopi Chan, they're adorable. Their wig work is phenomenal, and I missed the chance to meet them at Forest City Comic Con because I couldn't go. So many people I know got to meet them, and I was just, uh, I'm blown away by their work every time. All right. Um, have, you, have you ever had an incident? I got to know. This is a question I ask every, every cosplayer on, on the showcase. Do you have a memory of your most awkward fan meeting? <laughs> I have a couple. Um, I know this person now as a friend on Facebook, and I see her occasionally. But it was a little awkward for me when I went to a friend's birthday party. And part of my language is going to get a little R-rated. She came up to me and said, fuck me in the ass. I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> oh, Lord. I was a little bit taken back, but she's a nice person. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Now, um, have you ever met a cosplayer that you really like and you fangirled over them? Oh, I fangirled over Stella Chu when I met her at Katsucon last year. And ironically enough, I was wearing my Heartseeker Ash, and I guess from behind and in like a busy crowd, she thought I was Yaya Han. So when I turned around, she was like, oh, that's not her. I'm like, but I love you. <laughs> now, for the, um, for the viewers that we have here right now, um, you're actually in cosplay right now. That's, that's a given. I know that. But for, for, those who, for those who do not play that much video games, why don't we tell them who you are today? I am Juliet Starling from Lollipop Chainsaw. And this is the, the main costume that she wears in the game. Yeah, for the most part. She's got a bunch of them, but this is the default outfit. And, 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 and where's the end of your boyfriend? Pardon? Where's your boyfriend sit? <laughs> uh, it's in my closet. I really don't want to have to dig that out right now. Uh, it's a bit of a I, mess in there. I, 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 didn't know he, I didn't know he was still in the closet. Sorry, your your thing is breaking out. I can't understand. I, I didn't know he was still in the closet. Oh yeah, no, he's still there. He's still in the closet. He'll come out one day. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. Eventually. Whenever he gets a normal sized body. Normal sized. End yeah. of the game. Spoiler alert. Oh come on, yeah, you know, normal size. For those who haven't played the game, because the game has been out for a pretty long time. Yeah, it's been a pretty long time. Although every once in a while, when I wear this costume, I have people come up coming up to me saying that they wear the game releases and they have their like old, now moldy lollipops, and I'm actually so jealous of that because I didn't get to go. Have you have you been ever like um, have they ever has a fan ever seen you in this cosplay and um, mistaken you for another cosplayer? I have been mistaken for other cosplayers so many times. I I've lost count. <laughs> any, any specific cosplayers that come to mind mostly? Um, well, I've been mistaken for one of my friends, Natasha, or her, her blind cosplay. I probably butcher that name, but I've been mistaken as her, and I'm like, but we look nothing alike, like not even close. And I've been mistaken for another friend of mine. When we were actually standing together, I was wearing my Harley Quinn cosplay, and someone's like, "Are you guys twins?" 
And um, I don't know if you guys know Cyborg Katie, but she's a very thin, very pretty white girl, and I look nothing like her. But yeah, I get mistaken for a lot of people I know, and some that I don't. So it's like, uh, have you ever gotten mistaken for Justin here? A couple times in this costume. Well, and I always, I always ask this person, but have you seen her? She's knee great. Don't. Not the same. <laughs> Um, we have a we have a question from Sean Ramperstad. Uh, he wants to know what's your favorite convention to go to every year. Um, it's actually a convention I just started going to earlier this year, and so far it's Colossal Con. I love that convention. It's like being on vacation. Well, well, let's see. You know, because it's the it's the ending of a year, you know, there's still the next year coming up, there's going to be a lot more conventions. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you guys don't know, you might run into her before, um, before you know it. You might see her and all of a sudden you're like, I saw her on Google Plus. Oh, God, no. There are so many better cosplayers. Go watch them. <laughs> well, um, oh, look, Danny McMahon has another question for you. Why are you still here? <laughs> What is your favorite or dream convention? My favorite what convention? Your favorite or your dream convention? Like, is there a convention that you haven't gone to and really, really want to go to? I have a list, actually. <laughs> um, it starts with Yomacon, Anime USA, Anime Expo, Dragon Con, New York Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, and the list goes on. And now she has another question for you. <laughs> After all, that is a Q and A. So, <laughs> what is your opinion of heroes of cosplay? Ooh, no one has asked this question yet. Ever. Oh God! I know why she asked me that question, and I'm not going to answer it the way she wants. My opinion of that show is not a very good one, and I have a couple reasons why. Number one. Cosplay isn't all competitions and trying to make a gigantic name for yourself or just competing with people like crazy. They lack the fun in it. The show doesn't look fun. And for something with the name play in it as a hobby, that's pretty important. Um, I also don't agree with what I saw on the show, like a couple of opinions I saw of cosplayers, and it's probably honestly the way the show was edited, but the way that they made them sound, it was just awful, and I'd rather like meet these people and get to know them before judging them based on what I saw on this probably heavily edited, edited show. I just, I'm not a fan. I don't like it. All right. Well, you know, a lot, a lot of people felt the same way about the show. It gave, you know, they felt um, it gave more a constitutional drama based behind it. Yeah, it's it's all drama, it's all masquerades, and no fun. <laughs> and that's ridiculous. You know, like I, I saw the show and and I've seen all these cosplayers throughout the years um, at conventions and you know you see them in a different light. Um out of conventions. Yeah. You know, like I, I saw the scene where it came to um, Becky and Monica Lee being asked, you know, if she could want to team up with, with um, Becky and Monica. And you know, I, like, she wants to be with cosplayers on her level if she's going to compete. Oh, God. I'm sorry, but there's no such thing as on your level. If you honestly think you're better than everyone else, like, you're not someone I'd ever want to cosplay with. There are no levels unless you're entering the masquerade. If you don't want to cosplay with someone, fine, but don't do it because you think you're better than them. That's ridiculous. Well, I agree. You know, it's like um, I, I, I'm those type of people that say cosplay is for everybody. You should do it for fun, have fun with it because you know it's like that's how it started. You know, you're having fun. You know, you you want to go to Dragon Con just because you want to have fun and take pictures. Yeah. I'm not paying to get to all these conventions to have a billion strangers judge me because they think 
someone's better than me or like I need to go on stage to prove a point. Like I'm going because I want to meet cool people. I want to have a good time. I want to try new things. That's basically it. Like I don't really enter masquerade. It's not my thing. I, I haven't entered a concert uh, in a long time either. I used to um, enter the, the masquerades um, in my armors that I used to go. So. Yeah, like, I can see the appeal in a masquerade. Like, I'm not completely bashing that. Like, it's kind of cool that you are, like, so skilled, that you are comfortable going on stage and showing off your amazing work and, like, winning prizes based on that and just upping your skill level. That's super yeah. cool. It's just not for me. Yeah, you know, like, I can understand, like, when it came to um, Ricky Licati, Riddle, and the guy Jesse, the steampunk um, gospeler. I loved him. He's one of the part of the show that I actually loved. I thought he was great. Yeah. Did you want to play with his mustache? His mustache was magical. <laughs> now, um, like they wanted, they entered it because they wanted to get recognition for their craft because they wanted to do that as, as a profession. And that's cool. It's just not all of cosplay. <laughs> oh yeah, but you know, it's like you see costume designers actually attend these uh, competitions. You know, you know, and also it gets, it gets you better in what you're doing. You're making these characters, and then you can get the insight of, you know, what could you do to make it better, what could you do to... Oh, yeah, no, that's totally great. And it's, like, it's really good for goal-oriented people, too. Like, if you really need something to focus on to keep you, like, working at it, like, I guess it's really, really convenient to have the masquerade. And maybe one day I'll actually enter one of my costumes, but not right now. <laughs> um, Nick Thurman has a, has a question here. Is there a cosplay you wouldn't do? Hate the character, for an instance? Um, hmm. Dr. Eggman from Sonic? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Every time I see a new character, I, I think about, if I were to cosplay that, how would I do it? There are very few things that I look at, and I don't even think of that once. But I guess, yeah, we'll go with Eggman from Sonic. <laughs> you could do a female egg woman. <laughs> Imagine how high your belly, you would have to make your belly button like up there. Oh my god. We're not going to do that. <laughs> you know, you could use some of your hair and make a... No, I'm good. I'm good. Never. Thanks, though. Thanks. Now, um, <laughs> you do have a web page, um, and you do do a lot of photo shoots. So, does this mean also that you sell the prints of your photo shoots? I don't sell prints. Um, I have considered it because it honestly seems like a good way to make money to put back into this hobby that I'm spending money to be a part of. Yeah. A good idea. I honestly just never thought that anything I made would be worth selling prints of. Like, I didn't think anyone would want to buy them. Well, you do have a, a good amount of followers on your, on your page. Yeah, and I love that they're there. It's pretty awesome that they're actually looking at my stuff. <laughs> you know, and you, you, have, you, you have over 7,000 followers on your page. And you have a, a, all these lovely professional photos. You know, I truly doubt, I, I don't think there's anybody out there that would say no to buying a prank of your respect. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've been considering it, so maybe if I talk to the photographers that took the photos, they might be okay with it. I've, I might start by selling, see if I can sell maybe three of a, print, a certain print on my page. If I could sell three, maybe I'll go up to five. And if, I, if it does well, it does well. If it doesn't, then I'll just go back to what I was already doing. <laughs> well, you can always also check, like, um, you can do a raffle, for instance. You know, see if there's anybody who gets interested because they, got, they want the print. Yeah, that could work, too. Just, I'm not nuts about doing those giveaways. Yeah. I don't do them once in a while. Like, I might do them when I hit 10K, but... I don't want to do them too much. Oh, well, looks like looks like looks like Blake has a little comment about your your, your answer about Eggman. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "That was not a good reaction, Beck." 
laugh out loud. He doesn't like that. At Fine, I'll cosplay Eggman, and Blake, you can take pictures of it. Just you. And old Danny girl is back again. <laughs> uh, what cosplay people, what cosplay do people frequently tell you to do? P.S. Elu. P.S. what? P.S. Elu, I think. P.S. Elu? Um, I get told I should cosplay Princess Jasmine a lot. And I really want to, but that wig is going to cost so much money to do it. Oh, well, if, if you ever play, if you ever play Jasmine, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to get you back on here and have you sing a whole new world for us. What? <laughs> it's like if you ever cosplay Jasmine, we have to bring you back on the showcase and have you sing a whole oh, new world. Yeah. I would love to do that, and if I ever make enough money to do that wig without having, you know, to go without groceries, I will definitely do that. <laughs> And for all you guys that are watching right now, if you want to hear her sing, send in a question of her wanting to sing right now. And let me know if you want to hear her sing. All right, and here we go with, yeah. Oh, Danny's got a lot of questions. Oh, shit. Oh, sorry. Sugar. Oh, oh flowers. <laughs> What's your favorite anime game and who? My favorite anime game? No, your favorite anime game, and what's your favorite food? My favorite anime game. What limits it to anime, though? Like, I'm wondering what the guidelines are there. Uh, I like Hato Full Boyfriend. And my favorite food is probably pizza or chocolate, or pizza covered in chocolate. But not together. But not together. <laughs> not together. No, together, too. Any, any way, any way. You, you like, you like chocolate on your pizza? I'll, I'll eat chocolate on probably most things, most things. <laughs> somebody, somebody ordered Domino's and, and buy a, a bottle of Hershey syrup. We'll find this out. On the chocolate, only certain kinds of chocolate. <laughs> no chocolate. <laughs> Okay, um, we um somebody just joined us. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, um, let's see. Here's the question: What's your, what's your most? Yeah, we they did ask you. What's your most expensive cosplay that you have? Honestly, you, you don't remember. <laughs> None of my costumes are particularly that expensive because I find so many ways to cheat. Um, <laughs> I think the most I've spent on a costume fabric alone was 50 bucks. Uh, it was probably that Dynasty Warriors costume that took me the most time. It also cost the most money, and I have zero photos. <laughs> yeah, zero, zero photos still, right? Now, let's see. Um, they want to know um, like, what cosplay costs the most for you to do. I think I think probably material wise, like how much, which one of your costumes um, did you spend more? You needed to buy more materials for. To be honest, I think it's going to be my tracer cosplay. It hasn't been finished yet. I have just finished making the bodysuit, and the coat is sewn, but the lining isn't put in. So far, I've probably spent forty dollars on the fabric because I always get really good deals at my favorite fabric store because I'm there like every week. Um, but uh, as far as the armor goes, I haven't actually started putting any of that together, so I'm just gonna guess off the top of my head that it's gonna be my tracer cosplay. All right. Now, you're a, you you love pop culture, I'm assuming, right, Beck? Depends on what you mean by that. <laughs> oh, like. Comic books, video games, anime. Um, I haven't watched too much anime recently. I don't. I guess I kind of fell out of love with it. I'll still watch it every once in a while, but not as uh, frequently as I used to. All right, then I'm going to give you a little speed multiple choice. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Okay. All right. 
It's just going to be random questions, and you have to say the first one that comes into your head. Answer, okay? Okay. Shit, I'm so bad at these. DC or Marvel? DC. Hot Wheels or Matchbox? What? Hot Wheels or Matchbox? The first one. <laughs> Hot Wheels. Xbox 360 or PlayStation 4? PS4. Mario or Link? Link. <laughs> Anime or American cartoons? Anime. Dragon Ball Z or Yu-Gi-Oh! Dragon Ball Z. Um, Dracula or or Dragon Dra Dracula? <laughs> All right, you did pretty good. You, you, most was people, I great at most, no, most people have gotten most people have done that two XT has stuttered their their answers like, every single time. <laughs> oh, and Danny's back again. Oh sh. <laughs> She loves you so very much. I know. We were supposed to hang out. <laughs> oh, my God. We should have put her live along with it. <laughs> so, um, she wants to know, how do you deal with cosplay haters, rudeness, racism, etc.? What? <laughs> how do you deal with the, with the cosplay haters, like rudeness, racism, etc.? That depends. Um... In real life, I try really hard to ignore them, but if somebody's blatantly trying to make me have a bad time when I need to come into a convention that I'm trying really hard to have fun at, I don't deal with that particularly well. Fan Expo was a terrible example of this because at the time I was having a very hard, hard time at home, went to the convention to try to forget about it, and had a group of people come up to me and tell me what this one horrible girl was saying about me and telling all her friends to the point where people who I thought were my friends would come up to me and my friend and be like, oh, hey, Corey, what's up? And then Corey would be like, this is Rebecca. And they'd be like, yeah, I know who she is, and give me a dirty look. And I did not particularly enjoy that this year. But for the most part, it honestly just takes time to kind of get over that kind of stuff. And online, I'll either um, <clears throat> I'll troll them back, I'll ignore them, or I'll just get pissed off. I'm not good with that kind of stuff. Alright, um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard, you know, we've all dealt with it, we've all been experiencing that, we've been in the situation, half of us. Oh yeah, and I'm not going to pretend that I'm like some kind of mentor and that I'm just, I've come up with a science on how to deal with these people, it's just, you got to give it time, if you react badly to it, you got to let that go and move on. Exactly, and that's, that's true for a lot of us, you know, that's how we have to to handle it, you know, don't start a fight over it, you know, just, you know, try to take try to talk to them about it, you know, don't stick you shut, you know, speak your mind, you know, if somebody's bothering you or harassing you, you know, let them know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, Danny, here comes another question. Oh, hold on, uh, let me ask, this one's from Moru Akemi, um, she wants to know, What's your general opinion about the Catholic community? Is it good, bad, full of drama? Um, it used to be a lot better. I'll be honest. I think the cosplay community has kind of gone down in the recent year. There's been a lot more drama, a lot more competition and things that really shouldn't even be a contest. I'm hoping it gets better because it seems like people are kind of realizing that that's what's going on, but I don't know where it's going to go from here. Right. I mean, that's not the entire community. Don't get me wrong. There are some really amazing people in this community. You can make the best friends you'll ever make in this community. But it has its negative side. All right. Okay. Well, you know, that's, you know, that's how we all, like I said, we, we all feel the same way. You know, it's, it was a lot different back in the 90s when it first started. Before it I became, was born in the 90s, so I wouldn't know. No, but, well, no, well, <laughs> Because I started cosplaying back in '97, and it was a lot wider. It wasn't as big as it is now. You know, there weren't that there weren't that many haters. I wouldn't know. <laughs> you know. Back 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 then, they weren't. I feel so old now. 
Back then, there weren't that many haters. I feel young now. I I was three when this was happening, so I don't know. Uh, you feel young, yet you make me feel like a grandfather now. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, I, so hold, hold on one second as I mush my food. <laughs> well, um, Danny, hello, Danny. How you doing? We've missed you. It's only been like 10 seconds. All right. I said <laughs> I don't know if she comes over. <laughs> uh, she wants to know what is your favorite thing to do at cons? Um, the dealer's room. It's the game room most of the time when they have one. If not, just sitting on the floor eating food with my friends is good. That's the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, give, give me give me a piece of floor and, and a PB and this sandwich, and I'm a happy hustler. Pardon? Give me so give me a piece of floor and a and a PB and J sandwich, and I'm a happy cosplayer. Yeah, I'll take that pizza. I'll just sit on the floor, sit with my friends, whatever. It's a good time. Yeah. But a good game room, that's a good way to start. Too. Yeah, especially if, like if they have a for me personally, if they have a console section with some you know some Xbox, some PlayStation, you know. Yeah, I enjoy Just Dance. I can't remember what con I played that at this year. But we had a good group going. That was fun. I could I could never play Just Dance because of my cosplay. They don't. My cosplays are not physically um, good for dancing. I really shouldn't have been playing in the costumes that we're playing at. So I think we. <laughs> well, well, my costumes were basically all Iron Man based. So I'm, I'm in full armor. I don't have that much ability to go on to do dance, dance, revolution, or just dance type of stuff. And there's me dancing around in my really, really short skirts, trying really hard not to fall on my face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it look, looks like Brandon has an interesting question when it comes to um, the photographers you work with, actually. Okay. Um, who's your favorite photographer? Oh my god, put you on the spot there. That is a way <laughs> to put me on the spot, except if I'm not really oh, the right. I don't have a favorite. But let's see, um, who is your favorite photographer to work with at Ontario conventions? And who are, and why are they so great? I'm looking to work with more photographers that I haven't yet, that I haven't yet, cookies, okay? That's a loaded uh, question. Um, basically, have you worked with any photographers from the from Ontario Canada conventions? Pardon? Have you worked with um, photographers from the Ontario conventions. Um, I'm just gonna say no. I love all of these photographers. I am very thankful for anyone who is willing to work with me. They are amazing. A lot of the people I work with, they don't judge me based on how many likes I have, based on how great my cosplays are. They're just like, hey, you're fun. Let's shoot. And I love that. So thank you to any photographer who wants to shoot me. I love you all equally. Well, well, I think I think the question is more of asking if you have at any point in time worked with uh, a photographer from the Ontario area. Yes. Because this person um, wants to know why they're so great because they're looking for the photographer. Oh, they're looking for photographers in the GTA, like Ontario, or just yeah, for the at the that go to the Ontario conventions. Okay, our recommendations then. Um, I will always recommend Alice Noir's cosplay photography and Alex Rose's photography because they've been working with me for so long and they're both so talented and I love them to death. Um, photographers that I haven't really gotten much of a chance to work with lately, but I have in the past, not so much, but their work is amazing. I just can't afford them. Um, Amelie photography, beautiful work every time. Novi photography, amazing stuff all the time, and they, these guys, I, I think they shoot pretty frequently, so you shouldn't have too much of a hard time trying to catch them at a con. All right. Um, uh, and Sean's great too. <laughs> and Homoro wants to ask, um, what's the worst convention you ever went to? Oh, I hate answering that question. Because I know so many people put a lot of work into those conventions. Well, well I, I think the best way to, um, I, I can answer that one in a way because um, 
you can't really um, say what is worse and not because everybody has a different opinion on conventions. Like some people like them, some people don't. And it could be the same convention. It's just how you experience it in, okay. in that way. Well, I'm going to go based on my experience at the con, which might have nothing to do with how the con was set up. For me, this year, it was actually Fan Expo. Um, not only did I have a terrible time with the community negatives, but I honestly felt like I was just part of a meat factory. I was being just shoved into different places. I paid a lot of money for this ticket to be treated like crap. Um, it's just a big money grab. Like You're spending a lot of money, and it doesn't really seem worth it when you're done at the end of the day. Last year, I had a harassment problem with the staff. And I guess they improved it by firing that staff. But the, pro the thing is, I shouldn't have had this problem to begin with. What happened last year was I had a security guard working at the mansion when I was looking for where I could purchase my ticket, come up to me and, and look at my chest and ask me, so are those real? Can I touch them? I need to inspect. This was not a joke. This man actually works there. So wow. I went, yeah, I went to Fan Expo staff and I'm like, I need to make a complaint. And they're just like, oh, sorry. Okay, here's a Thursday pass. Bye. If, if Fan Expo um, ever runs into this video or somebody who goes to this video and has seen this stuff, that's your experience. That's your experience. You may not have had the same, but if you do, speak up, let them know, and put your foot down. The management I talked to was pretty nice. Everybody else just kind of brushed me off. And you should really talk to your staff if you're going to let them talk to the guests like that. Exactly. Oh, Danny, Danny, Danny. Oh, Danny. I'm guessing this is like a close friend of yours. You could say that. <laughs> because she wants to know your whole life story. My whole life story? Yeah, because now she's, like, she's asking, what was your first game console? My first game console? Oh my god, why do you care? It was a PS1. Leave me alone. <laughs> All right, um, here um, we have to like back again. Sorry, he, he said sorry to hear about uh, Fan Expo. Oh, good. Um, um, shooting. I got He actually shot with you. He did. He took some really, really gorgeous pictures of my Starfire costume, some of which are on my Instagram. Yeah, he says right here, um, shooting with you was one of the highlights for me. I hope it gets better for you. Thank you. Oh my god, you're so sweet. We gotta shoot again sometime. So you hear that, Blake? She wants to shoot with you again. Make an appointment, schedule it, make another epic photo shoot, but we want to see some photos on. My heart. Oh, you're looking at you. You're, 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 you're making her, her heart skip a beat. No, it just I feel so flattered. People like shooting with me. Go ahead, go ahead. Give, give him a big part. Uh, and okay, Mamara is back again. Um, basically, I guess her questions are mostly about your conventions. Uh, what cons do you plan to go to in the next little while? Well, I don't think there are any more conventions for the rest of this year, I think. Um, I've started getting better at planning this year, but if you know me well enough, you'll know that I'm the kind of cosplayer that if I kind of want to go to something, I'll post a status and see if I can get a ride and a place to stay the week before the convention. Occasionally, if I can't, I will just take the bus and I'll show up through a day. But um, I might be at Ottawa PopCon based on a plan similar to that. For sure, I'll be at CapsuCon 2016. Colossal Con 2016, MTAC, March Toronto Comic Con, whatever they call it now, uh, in the North, and everything else to be decided. All right, so um, I, I want to ask um, you've been making a lot of your cosplays are more like fabric based, right? Yes. Have you ever thought of making something um, based on armor? Because there are a lot oh, of. I have. Uh, that Dynasty Warriors costume that you're never going to see was very armor heavy. Same with the two I'm working on for Katsukon. Um, I have made armor. I just never get pictures in it. 
<laughs> I'm not very everything that's armor based. Everything that you have that's armor based has no photos on. For the most part, like I've only made three or four armored projects so far, and they were all done this year, so they're not that good. But I feel like I have a slightly better grasp on it. So for my Katsukon costumes, I'm hoping to bring back a lot better armor. I have a feeling 2016 is going to be very armor based, like very armor heavy costumes for me. All right, then I'm just going to say this Blake, get your tush over to her and get some armor photos done. You could be the first photographer to get some photos of her in those cosplays. Get, get over there, man. Give her some love. Show, show her you some love. Cosplay is about love. Come on. And her face like she's making right now. There, that's, that was very just Jessica Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, Palmer wants to, uh, wants to know what's the simplest cosplay. Oh, basically, like the simplest, maybe like the first one you've ever made, right? The easiest costume I've done. Um, I wouldn't say any costume is overly simple. Um, if you've been following me long enough, you know that I will throw out costumes in like a week. Like I'll be making things very, very quickly, and then moving on to the next project because that's just the way I work. I go very fast. But uh, maybe my supersonic own? One of my supersonic owns. I've already done like five versions, a couple I don't even have photos of. Again, because I'm kind of slow when it comes to booking photos and photographers. I'm bad at it. But but you do have a supersonic photo on your on your on your Facebook page. Oh, I have a couple. I'm just saying they're not all the versions of her I've done so far. That's only a couple yes, of them. I, I, think the one I, I think the one I saw was kind of almost like lingerie based. Oh, that's um, After Party Sonic. Oh, uh, new figurine. I liked it. I wore it for Toronto's Gay Pride because I thought it would be fun. And then since I already had it, I was like, can you take pictures of me to my roommate? And he's like, yeah, sure, I guess. Get on the couch. <laughs> Um, well, oh, here, here we have Blake again. Hello. Okay, the past year, Marvel actually featured a number of cosplayers on covers of their comics. What are you? What are your thoughts on this? Is this something you do? And yes, so shooting again with armor. <laughs> he said, he said, a definite yes, for shooting with armor with you. I think that's pretty fucking cool. Uh, that's pretty cool. I did not swear. Um, yeah, no, that's that's a cool idea. I'd like to be a part of that. I love getting involved in the community in any way. So throw it at me. <laughs> I, I think that one of the one of the cosplayers they chose um, was Yaya Han for one of their covers. That's cool. And <laughs> hey, you could be up there with her. You could be up there with Yaya. Uh, no, I've not been doing this long enough. <laughs> You don't have to be doing it long enough, that long. It doesn't matter on the years. It matters on how, how great you look in your cosplays. Fair enough, but I, I, I don't consider myself that good. I learned everything I knew from like Google. And I didn't even follow Google instructions that well because I was too lazy to read the tutorials. Hey, 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 hey. that doesn't really matter. Most of, them, most of them learned our stuff on Yahoo and, and YouTube. And, oh, and they were barely, and they Honestly, were barely I don't them. actually even know how to properly use a pattern. If I want to make something, I'll eyeball it. Be like, that kind of looks like it's the right shape, and then I'll sew it together. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Amara wants to ask, do you regret doing any of the cosplays you've done? Mm, you know what? Um, no, I don't regret making any of the things I've made because in everything I've made, I've learned a new technique. I've learned something new. I've learned how to pose. I've learned a new makeup trick. So if I were to regret one of them, I would have lacked the skills I've learned from making it. So no, not particularly. <laughs> so speaking of, of that, um, and we have Blake here. Um, why don't you tell us what's I'm sure you have a trademark pose for um, some of your photo shoots, like 
you repeat a certain pose at the time? Um, probably. I am. I notice a lot of times I will not look at the camera directly. I'll look to the side or I'll look in the air because I don't like how my face looks when I'm looking directly at something. Well, so I, I can count. I can, I can honestly say I think I would agree with that one because I've seen um your your arcade misfortune. I've I, already seen it. <laughs> I, I see. I saw the photo of you as as arcade misfortune. Um, star. Um. Uh, Starfire, um, Supersonico, and also as the the new sexy Freddy Krueger. Oh yeah, the <laughs> Freddy. I love that art. And, and and then you're like this. Yeah. I don't like to look at the camera, and I don't know why. <laughs> I, I, I don't. Have, I, I I can understand that because even when I like, I, if I ever go in front of the camera, I'm always like. Like I took it, I go for profile more than, than a straight on looking. Oh yeah, wait, I just realized one of my signature posts is that I never post on anything. I always when someone's taking a photo of me and they haven't asked, I'll do something like this. Give them the give them the sexy eyes like Ooh. Oh god, no, it's not supposed to be sexy, it's don't look at my face. Like uh or or, or this. I'll take a picture, I'm 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 showing right now, I'm getting something. <laughs> but um, I gotta ask you. I said you've been doing this for a long time. Is there anything you'd like to tell the beginners that are, are starting out right now? Like, what would you, what kind of advice would you give them? Um, pick your costumes based on what you love. Don't pick it because your heroes are doing it, and don't pick it because you think it's sexy and will get you a lot of attention. Trust me, you'll just you're not gonna have fun if you're doing it for those reasons. You're not going to have fun if that's why you made something. I mean, you might get the attention you wanted, sure. Your heroes might even notice, but it's, it's just not half as fun as picking a character that you've played the game of 15 times through in the last week and just enjoyed the hell out of. Oh, uh, okay. I don't understand the question. I don't know. Maybe you will. Um, do you JoJo pose? I've never watched JoJo. If this is a JoJo pose, yes. I don't know. Well, um, for those who are watching who don't know how to research and what you guys want to follow her, um, why don't you share your, your information for your, your Facebook um, and other sites that you that they can find you, maybe Instagram or Twitter, so they can. Uh, follow you and keep keep up with you what you're doing now. Uh, sure. My Facebook and Instagram and DeviantArt, pretty much everything is all the same name. Bex Cosplay Wonderland. Um, I don't go on Tumblr anymore because I found it kind of annoying. I think that's a, oh, and WorldCosplay.net. Same same name. Bex Cosplay Wonderland. All right, and uh, um. Since, since the year is already ending, we're already in November, and I think it's coming up. Um, your first convention for the year of 2016, um, which one would that one be that you're planning on? Katsukon. Katsukon. So, you guys, you guys want to, if you guys are at Katsukon, make sure to um, keep an eye out. She'll be there. Most likely she'll be in armor, so you won't recognize her. Um, actually, you might not with the big sister helmet. You will not want to be in my face at all. The only way you'll know is if you follow her on Facebook and she posts what she's wearing that day. Are you eating a lollipop? Yes, she is. I'm actually friggin' starving, but this is for now. And is the, I'm guessing the chainsaw is also in the closet. You guessed right. I'm not gonna say it out loud. I'm sorry. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm sorry. So that was the last question we have. There we have no more questions. You asked them all. Danny has no more questions for you. It's a miracle. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so why don't you give your your followers and your your viewers and fans 
So much, much needed love and a, and a farewell goodbye for your interview city. It was a pleasure having you. It was nice and meeting all of you guys. I love to answer your questions. Danny, when you come over, we're going to have words. But thank you so much, everybody else, who asked questions. Thank you for having me on your Google thing. Don't know what, what it is, but it was cool. Yeah, it's basically this page is um, uh, I'm the Greek in here, Puerto Rico, who um, gives just live interviews with the doctors who can go to those conventions to meet you guys in person. You know, it's kind of hard nowadays um, with the economy for cosplayers to meet their favorite cosplayers and ask them questions that they want to know. Because you can you can send them messages on Facebook, but they don't respond so fast because they're so busy. I'm bad at that. I'm gonna say that right now. I am so bad at answering any messages. Not just my Facebook page, my actual personal page, text messages. I am bad at it. And I'm sorry if you sent me a message in the past and I haven't answered. I take it from my family and my friends. They get the same response. Well, guys, if you guys want to watch more um, of these lovely cosplayers that we have all over the world, um, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Vila's Photo. Um, and you can find that next time I'll be having the, um, I have several cosplayers. I'll be interviewing um, Sony Arlen eventually. I'll also be interviewing the Arda sisters, the twin sisters. That go to a lot of conventions along with Vegas PG. So they'll be coming up later in this year. If you guys want to see them, ask them questions, make sure to subscribe to the channel to see when it's coming up. And that way you can have your, your seats available to enjoy some more cosplay epicness with these lovely ladies with the with the derpy faces like like she's making right now. Go ahead, show them your, your derpy lollipop. Oh, <laughs> have fun subscribe to his page i'll learn how to do youtube things eventually goodbye <laughs>